What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets and Rob. How is everybody doing? Before I get started talking about, is it a good move to sign Ryan Stanek? Don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So we know the Mets need some bullpen help. They need a setup guy. Lopez is a guy that could possibly be a setup man, but we need a proving guy to bridge to Edwin Diaz. And I think that 8-9 combination is going to be where the bullpen is going to thrive the most in 2024. Are the New York Mets really serious about Ryan Stanek? They really haven't really signed anybody for the bullpen except for a couple of minor league guys. And yes, a guy like Jorge Lopez, guys like that. That doesn't excite the Mets fan base, doesn't really build a, a bowl of confidence for this bullpen going into 2024. And I think a lot of people, you know, are seeing that the Mets are interested in Ryan Stanek and saying, hey, listen, he's got a championship pedigree, pitched for the Houston Astros uh, since 2021, has a World Series under his belt, and he pitches in big moments, and he doesn't have to be the big guy in the bullpen. He just got to be the bridge to Edwin Diaz. And yes, of course, every now and then, you know, give him a save here and there to give a little bit of relief to Edwin Diaz every now and then. But it makes a lot of sense for the Mets to do this, not only because the fans are desperate for the Mets to sign anyone this offseason that is actually, you know, has a good resume. And that's something that the Mets really haven't done this year, specifically in the bullpen. And I think that's where the New York Mets are lacking. You know, I see pretty much they're done with the rotation. We'll see if they do get a DH. But the bullpen could help this team tremendously, knowing with the question marks we have in the rotation, you don't have to rely on our starters going six and seven innings or seven or eight innings almost every single start. You can go into a game. We can say, all right, give me five or six innings, and then we can go to our bullpen with a Lopez, Stanek, Diaz. That sounds a lot better. And you have Rayleigh as well. Sounds a lot better when your pitchers go six innings and you have a combination of a Rayleigh, Stanek, Diaz, Lopez type of bullpen. It sounds a lot better. And I think Mendoza and the Mets fans will be a little bit more confident going to those guys, unlike last offseason when Buck Showalter had basically had nobody except for Robertson to trust. And when your pitchers couldn't go five or six innings, which they didn't do a lot of, you have a lot of guys to trust in your bullpen. And I think Stanek could possibly change that for Mendoza and the 2024 Mets. It's just a lot more confidence this bullpen needs amongst just the organization, just the guys in the dugout, the confidence. You know, give them a lead and they're going to win the ball game for you. That's what the Mets were lacking. They had it in 2022, which was extremely important, especially with the really good starting pitching that they had. But there was there was a guarantee almost in 2022 that you gave that ball to your bullpen. It was going to get shut down. It was way far gone with Diaz injury and basically nobody else to trust except David Robinson really was pitching well. He wasn't the guy to give him the ball in the biggest spot. And that's the guy that the Mets need. The bridge that the guy is not afraid of taking the ball. And Ryan Stanek is not a guy that backs down. He goes after hitters. He's got nasty stuff. He's the type of guy that throws 97 and 99, occasionally 100. He's a flamethrower. He challenges the hitters. And he does not back down. He is a badass. He is a guy that challenges it is he's a badass. He's a guy that does not worry about it, showing his emotion when those big strikeouts happen or the big moments happen in a ball game. You've seen it with the Astros. You've seen that a very famous one that rolls around on X or just around social media where he was pointing and yelling at the Dodgers after he struck him out. And that's the type of guy we need. We need a bad ass in this bullpen especially a guy that is not going to back, back, back down at any moment. He gets the ball at any part of the game, 7th, 8th, 6th, ninth. doesn't matter. You know he is going to go balls to the wall, and that's the type of passion, and that is the type of motivation and the guy we need. We need a guy that is not afraid to step on that mound and do their job at any moment. The Mets are lacking that. The Mets need a couple of guys that are rough around the edges. This team is soft. We've said that for years. This team, once they get hit in the mouth, they don't bounce back up and punch back. 
that's the problem that I think we have going into the season. Yes, you need talent on the field, but you also got these guys to back up their own guys. You know, Stanek won't be afraid to throw at somebody if they throw at some throw at one of our guys. Something that we did not do last year. I know that's not, you know, win or losing, but it brings a boat of, hey, this guy got my back. And I think Stanek would do that 100% because he will not back down. The problem that I do have with Stanek is that everybody thinks, oh, he's so great. He's so good. He had a down season in 2023. And we're going to look at his stats right now to show you a little bit more of exactly what he was doing. So in 2023, he had a 4.09 ERA. He wasn't the go-to guy that he was in 22 and 21 with the Astros when he had a 1.15 ERA on 22 and 3.42 in 21. Static wasn't the guy that they relied on so much because he struggled last year with the 4.09 ERA. 50 innings, the lowest of the last couple of seasons. It was actually one of the lowest of his career except for 2019, and that's a little worrisome. But he's only 31 years old. I think he's still got a lot. I mean, he's got the arm. You know, when he can throw 100 at will, he's got a nasty splitter. He's got a nice slider, and that, that complements well with his high-velocity fastball. But I do worry about he gave up eight home runs, which is not a lot in 50 innings. I like that. 21 walks is a little worrisome, but still pretty good. And again, you can see his strikeouts at 51, which is around a strikeout per inning. But he is the guy that I think I'm not worried about that 4.09 ERA, not much worried about, but I do worry that is he on the decline a little bit? You know, the stuff is still there, but what really was it that, you know, was he not missing bats enough? Was he, you know, he is only striking out uh, one guy per inning, which is still pretty good, but I do worry, you, you know, if you look at his last two seasons, 62 strikeouts, 83 strikeouts, obviously more innings, but look at 2022. I mean, it's almost, it's, it's 11 strikeouts more in just four more innings, and that kind of concerns me a little bit because was he missing bats enough? Because with a 4.09 ERA, it tells me that he wasn't missing as many bats as he was. And his put-away pitches, which is his, his splitter, basically, but he is the guy that likes to blow by guys as well. Maybe that wasn't happening as much. Again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I was watching 162 games of Astro Baseball. I was not. So you look at the ERA and it's like, wow, he didn't really have a good season, but Watching him every day, you kind of have a feel. Was was it him? Was it, you know, mistakes made on the field? There's a lot of uh, variables that go into it. But with a 4.09 ERA, are you going to take that at will? And maybe that's why the Metro a little bit hesitant to sign him. Or you look at the years that he had with a 3.42 and a 1.15 only two years ago. You're like, hey, we get this. This is the perfect bridge to Edwin Diaz. And I think that's where we have to look with Stanek. I think you just have to rely on the fact that it was just a down season and you just hope that you can get him around the three, three and a half ERA mark, but he would be the perfect guy to bridge to Edwin Diaz. So I'm going to ask you, Mets fans, should the Mets sign Ryan Stanek? Is it a good move if they do? Or who else do you want instead? Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button if you're enjoying my content. Want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Let me know in the comments, guys. Is Ryan Stanek the right guy to sign for that eighth inning row for the New York Mets? Let me know in the comments, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. And as always, Mets fans, let's go Mets.